In this video I'm going to demonstrate how we can use some of the auto extraction features in Enforce to pull out white lining and curves. Um, the feature extraction tools are a bolt-on for designer, so they're not standard in Enforce Designer, they are a paid extra. I will start by using uh, the road marking mode though, so I go to road markings. Okay, so the first thing I need to do is identify the intensity of the lines that I'm going to use for the line extraction. So to do that, I'll scroll down here choose pick intensity and just hover over the lines okay so all we need to do is to get roughly close to it and then what we're going to do is we're going to just manually go in and tweak that so at the moment it's using this value but if I was to say 35,000 it changes to that if I was to go higher say 40,000 changes to that all right so what we're trying to do is we're trying to remove the clutter so that the line extraction routines will have a better chance of following these lines so to start that off I do is we do add seed and I'll say my first is going to go here and I'll add another one in that direction there okay so there are my two seeds now I'm not expecting the second one to do much here because obviously the line data breaks down but the first one should should be able to get through here I think and carry on so we'll see what happens so hit extract and there we go. Yep, that's gone through. Okay, now if you want to, you can actually also specify a maximum length to extract. So you can type a number in the maximum distance value here, but for time being, I'd select carry on. That's done a pretty good job of going down the center line. And if we zoom in here, so as expected, it's kind of struggled here because the data's missing, but the other side of the line is actually done all right. So. I'm going to use a code that's been set up to draw a dashed line style. So it's not going to draw one line segment and then clear the next and then draw the next one and clear the next. This is an actual line pattern through the points. So if I hit commit all, they go down. Now that pattern isn't shown in the 3D view yet. That should be in the future. But if I switch back to the 2D view, there we go. So there's the line pattern. Uh, if I put the image back on, all right, so we can see that the actual pattern actually starts a little bit further back. So to help that, what we can do is we can go points, move, drag, and I can just move that point to say there, and that point sort of parallel with it, so that they kind of then key in and, and line up. Um, now it, it broke down a little bit here. It went it went kind of wonky. So under the design menu. I'll choose a line between and let's straighten it up between there and there. There we go. That makes it a bit more presentable. Now we need to obviously key in the missing part here. So if I go back to the 3D view, just hit refresh. So that's now updated. So if I come out of this tool, okay and then do always visible. So you can see that's where it stops there. And that's obviously where the road markings have been destroyed, but we can probably help it a bit. So if I now go to digitize, use the same code. So you click select points using the correct code. I'll just infill. Okay. And then under editing, we can select join and join that to there. So now back in the 2D view, that's lined up properly now. Set a couple of lines that need tweaking. So we'll just go delete the indicate there and just delete that point. That straightens that. Okay, but on the whole, that's otherwise all right, I think. So we put the image back on. We need to do the diagonal lines. So I'll do it in the 2D view now. So we're just going to points insert. I'm going to choose white line gapped. Model interpolate for the height onto the point cloud using the lowest levels. Okay, and we'll say like the first one's here. And then if we come down to the very end, the last one say is about here that we can see. To infill these diagonals, we go to road hatching, click either side, click the 
first diagonal that I digitized earlier and all the way down to the last one. Here it is. And give it the spacing, which I think will be two anyway. Okay. So again, not exactly what's there, but certainly indicative. So we've looked at extracting some white lining. Now we're going to look at also extracting some curves. So I've already dropped down the seed that you can see here. Here is the curve information that we're going to try and extract. Okay. Now these settings again are tailored to the data. Um, the main settings that we need to worry about for this type of curve extraction is the height tell min and max. So basically what we're doing here is we're telling the software to look for a height change in the software. So that's the kind of what it's going to use. So it's looking between 5 centimeters and 15 centimeters fundamentally. Um, but again, the rest of the settings are all set up to go. So I'm just going to press extract. Okay, now it's only gone 27 meters, but that's because there's a drop curve here. Okay, so obviously that height change disappears. So I'm going to say, okay, we'll just uh, commit and continue. All right, now what I'm going to do is we're going to just right click that, and we'll choose move, and we'll move it to the other side of the drop curve. And we just tweak the rotation slightly. Okay, and then all things being well and good, if I now just hit extract, it carries on. Okay, so that's done another 158 meters. And again, it looks like we've got a bit of a drop curve there, hence the DZ change has vanished, so it's stopped. But otherwise, I'm pretty happy with that. As you can see, um, it keeps the points around the curves and it thins them out along the straights. All right, um, so that's the process fundamentally, and you can obviously drop down as many seeds as you like. If you've got curves other side of the road, you could do them both at the same time. So I'm just going to hit commit all. Okay, and I'll just cancel this tool, and then in the 2D view, I can join it, or I can do it actually in here as well, just by going to editing, and then clicking on join points, and we'll join that to there. Okay. Um, so that's a way of doing it. Where you have nice long stretches of curb, that tool works well. If you're constantly switching between curves and drop curves, it might be just as simple to do it in the 2D view. So I'll just quickly demonstrate that. Okay, so if I turn the color image off, here you go, you can see that's the curb that we've just extracted. Okay, um, if I turn the image back on, I'll move back into the town. Okay, so these curve sections here where you've got the curb disappearing, again, it's probably going to be easier to do that in 2D, or rather, it's going to be easier to do that in the 2D view. So we're just going to go to points, and I choose insert. If I choose KB, and obviously dropping the points, and what we'll say is we'll say highest within point one. Okay, and we'll just choose where to start. So let's start here. In this mode, I can actually put points further apart because what I can then use, I can use a special densify function to increase the point density after I've inserted the points. So I don't actually have to create points along the long straights. I can get the densification tool to do that for me. Okay, so if I turn the markers on the point crosses, you'll see points reasonably far apart. And obviously, denser, more denser packed around the curve. So what I'll do there is I'm just going to first of all go to lines. I'm going to go to curve tangent between. So we start tangentially. So we go between there, say, and there. So that gives us a slightly better curve. And then what we can do is we can say densify all. Click that line. And we can say maximum distance and only create us more points every, say, two meters on top of the model using the highest points. Okay, and there you go. So you can see we've got a lot more points, but we didn't actually have to, we didn't actually have to manually digitize them. The densification tool can do that for us. So let's just check that in the 3D to see how it looks. That looks pretty good. And obviously then we can do the channel line just by paralleling it over. So that's lines parallel all. Click the curb, click which side. Give it the code, give it the offset, and tell it how to calculate the height. 
it's in the lowest level. Press the view, and there you go. So now you can see we have the channel line and the curve line created sitting on top of the point cloud, lining up perfectly. So you can either digitize manually or you can use the auto extraction tools, but using a combination of both, large stretches could be auto extracted more quickly, but obviously for the tighter, more difficult sections, the tools in Enforce are quite adequate to do it manually and you only need to do it once because everything else can be paralleled off. For instance, here we have the double yellows. Let's just quickly demonstrate that again. Turn the image back on so we can see where we need to do the parallel. Okay, so we need to insert a point here. So to do that, we have the lines, apex, insert free, and I'm going to click here. And just make sure we have one over the other end. Okay, so now we can use parallel indicated between, and we'll say between there. And there, and he wants to know how far out. So I'll say to here, and then we we'll use the yellow line code. Model interpolating the lowest point. Okay. And obviously now we can just create the other one right next to it. So do parallel all this time. 150. There we go. Nice and easy when you have one string to use as a guide. Now we can move on and look at some of the more fine detail.